All right, we are back here again with the annual WWE Year in Review series. This Year in Review series is about the year 2021. Just like always, the year sucked, as usual. However, I didn't think the year was all that bad. And it actually came down to the wire. So we'll get into this year. I'll tell you what I liked, what I disliked, and my overall rating of this year. So we start off with Raw Legends Night. Oh boy. So apparently Raw, they got the lowest rating of all time. And what did they do? Instead of fixing the shows, They just do the Legends Nights where they bring out a bunch of part-timers. Do nothing but say hi to the fans. A couple years ago, Raw Reunion aired back in 2019. And that show sucked as well. I gave it a 5 out of 10. The only parts I liked were the Legends. And the rest of the show was just awful. Shows you how terrible the current roster is. That's what happened with this show. I was also about to give this show a 5 out of 10 until the ending. But I'll tell you what I like. You know, I like, I like seeing the legends there. I like seeing Hulk Hogan there. I like seeing Melina there. I like seeing Ric Flair there. Along with IRS, Tatanka, Mickey James. I like seeing Orton going around, creeping around the back. You know, pestering the, pestering, you know, the legends like Big Show and Mark Henry. You know, the list of names that he's taken out over the years. I thought that was cool. Like the match I had with Jeff Hardy. That was good. Then he had Keith Lee do a WWE Championship Showcase match with McIntyre. That was also good. But then everything else was just off. He had a Lucha House Party to beat the Hurt Business. And the Hurt Business at this point, I, I believe they are the Tag Team Champions, or had them lose a non-title match to the Lucha House Party. Then have Bobby Lashley at this point, he's the United States champion. You're going to have him lose to Matt Riddle. At this point in time, I was not high on Matt Riddle. I never really understood him coming out of NXT. I always thought it was a jobber. I like him now, but I didn't really like this earlier on. And you had Dana Brooke, of all people, pin Shayna Baszler. She's been buried for a whole year. This was terrible. So at this point, I was going to give the show a 5 out of 10 till the ending. Had Drew McIntyre coming out at this match with Keith Lee. He wants another challenge at the Royal Rumble. Who comes out to challenge him? Goldberg. He makes his return. I thought this was interesting. I like the promo Goldberg did. Talk about how Drew McIntyre is disrespectful. Talks down to all the legends. And yeah, Drew McIntyre, he's beaten a lot of legends. He beat Randy Orton. He's beaten Brock Lesnar. About time someone puts him in his place. As far as for all legends night goes, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It was okay, but this show was not needed. And he had no fans. So there's no point to this show. So we got the build for the Royal Rumble. As far as the build goes for the Royal Rumble, I thought it was all right. We kicked off of Orton Triple H. They had a brawl at the end of the night. That led Alexa Bliss to come out and give a fireball to Randy Orton. I thought this was cool. 
like this dark twist that they're doing here with Alexa ever since she started teaming up Bray Wyatt. So I thought this was cool. Drew McIntyre, Goldberg, I thought their feud was all right. I liked that they included The Miz here. They brought out Goldberg. This was cool. Then they had Sasha Banks to feud Carmella. I didn't care about that at all. Then you had Roman Reigns. They were determining his next challenger for the Royal Rumble. They were having a gauntlet match. Adam Pierce entered this match, entered this match. And he won. He became the number one contender of the Roman Reigns. But during the gauntlet match, he had a back injury. So he decided to back out of the match and he brought in his replacement, Kevin Owens. I wasn't so sure about this. I'd kind of like to see Pierce get back in the ring, go one one with Roman, but you know, I'll take Kevin Owens. I like the matches they had in the past. So I thought it was all right. And then you had a big net from Edge announcing his return to the Royal Rumble. Even though this was cool, I was like, why aren't they keeping this a surprise? Like, why? So before we get the Royal Rumble, they had a pay-per-view event right before. And it aired on India's Republic Day. It's called the Superstar Spectacle. You know, Rick Flair was there wishing India happy Independence Day. As far as the match card goes, you had Finn Balor to beat Guru Raj. You had AJ Styles to beat Jeet Rama. Then you had Dilsher Shanky, Giants and Jair, Rey Mysterio, and Rick Shady to defeat Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, King Corbin, and Shinsuke Nakamura. It's Charter Flair and Serena Sandhu, that's her name, defeated Bailey and Natalia. In the main event, at Drew McIntyre and in this share, they defeated the Bollywood Boys and Jinder Mahal. And that was it. As far as the superstar spectacle goes, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind them showcasing talents from India. They also had the great Kali there, so that was cool. Um, but it felt like just a regular Saudi show, but in the Thunderdome. No doubt was this going to be a Saudi show. I guarantee it. If the pandemic wasn't around, this would be in Saudi Arabia. It just felt like. So I thought the show was all right, but nothing special. So we go to the Royal Rumble. I thought the Royal Rumble. Was pretty good. You had Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. They defeated Asuka and Charlotte Flair to recapture their women's tag team titles. I didn't mind it. I like the pairing between Shayna and Nia. Shayna needs Nia. Without Nia, Shayna would be so lost. And that's just sad. Because NXT built it up perfectly and they called to main roster where she failed. Not like I didn't expect that. I did. I didn't expect she failed that badly. You know, Sasha Banks to beat Carmella and Drew McIntyre to beat Bill Goldberg. Roman Reigns, he beat Kevin Owens. Then you got the women's Royal Rumble match. I thought that was interesting. You had some legends return, like Victoria, Tori Wilson, Jillian Hall. And yet Bianca won the Rumble by last illuminating Ray Ripley. I thought this was the right decision. Your Bianca or bust here. She doesn't win. And if they're going to do a Bailey and Sasha Banks match at WrestleMania, what makes you think they'll have any plans for Bianca Belair? And if they have no plans for her, she'll be thrown to the side like everybody else. And no one wants that. Then you had a men's Roman match. I thought this was all right as well. 
get some Legends Return, like Christian. I was shocked by that. This was his last match in the WWE. I was also surprised by that. He went over to AEW. Hurricane Helms was there. Kane was there. Carlito was there. And yet Edge won the Rumble by last eliminating Randy Orton. I thought this would set up Edge versus Orton at WrestleMania. And I had the WrestleMania card all fleshed out here. I thought it was be Roman Reigns and Goldberg, and Edge and Orton. Was I right? Well, it remains to be seen. So fallout from the Royal Rumble. You had another match between Edge and Randy Orton. It's match number three. Edge won at last year's WrestleMania. Orton won at Backlash. So now they're going to even the score. So now they're going to settle the score here, which Edge won. Dennis Guard started going to different shows to see, you know, who would challenge. You know, he went to Raw to challenge Drew McIntyre. He went to SmackDown to see who would challenge Roman Reigns. He went to NXT. That was odd. And he was wanting, and he was interested in challenging Finn Balor. So I thought this was interesting. And I didn't mind him stalling at first because I thought he was eventually going to choose Randy Orton. I thought Orton's going to win the chamber. As far as the chamber participants goes, I didn't mind. As far as the Raw chamber goes, the Raw former WWE champions. It's Sheamus, AJ, Drew. It's Randy, Kofi, Jeff Hardy, and the Miz. So I didn't mind that. And you had the SmackDown Chamber. You know, it was all right. If Sammy's in there, like Sammy, you have Uso, Owens, Brian, and then you have Cesaro. So I thought that was all right. All right. Then you got some type of storyline between Ric Flair and Charlotte Flair. Apparently, Ric Flair cost Charlotte Flair her match, and that led to Ric aligning himself with Lacey Evans. And so I thought this was cool. You know, Rick and Charlotte do have a history with one another. They fought with each other. They fought against each other. So I didn't mind this feud at all. And I thought it was pretty good as long as it gets Lacey Evans over. What I didn't care for was the feud between Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, and I had Jack and Shayna Bates. This feud... It was pretty much all. It, it really was. Because you have Bianca Belair, she wins the run, all right? You got four months to build a story going into WrestleMania. And you want to waste one month of this by going out to the women's tag belts. Sasha, Bianca do not need women's tag belts to cause a rift between the two. You just need to tell a story. What story is that? That they're two black women made of any WrestleMania. That's what they should have done for four months. But they didn't do that. And this, this was awful. As far as the road to the chamber goes, I thought it was all right. But now I'm to the elimination chamber itself. So you got a fatal four-way match. This would determine the third participant in the United States Championship Triple Threat match. It's supposed to be Keith Lee versus Riddle versus Lashley, but apparently Keith Lee was absent from the event. Apparently sent him down to the PC, so he was off the card. So it's John Morrison. He defeated Elias Mustafa Ali. 
and Ricochet. Then you had the Elimination Chamber match for SmackDown. Daniel Bryan won. And then right after the match, instead of facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, Roman Reigns challenged the winner of this match immediately after the Chamber match. Daniel Bryan, run, Daniel Bryan won. He immediately fought Roman Reigns after the Chamber match, and he lost in mere seconds. And yet Edge comes out, delivers the spirit of Roman Reigns. So it looks like we're getting Edge and Roman at WrestleMania. However, the match wasn't really made official. And yet Riddle defeat Bobby Lashley and John Morrison. So Matt Riddle's your United States champion. And then you had the women's tag team title match. You had Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler. They retained their titles over Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. <clears throat> and I thought this was weird and unexpected. I thought Sasha Banks would win this match, but apparently she didn't. So what's going to happen next? You need to get the men's chamber match. At Drew McIntyre, he wins the chamber match. Then out of nowhere, Lashley attacks Drew McIntyre. He just lost his U.S. title match earlier in the night. Now out of nowhere, comes in the Miz. He brings the money in the big briefcase down, catches him on McIntyre, and Miz walks out, the WWE champion. And I thought this was fantastic. Miz is the smartest player in the game. So then we get the build towards Fastlane. And I thought this was awful. This is where the year takes a hit. You had Alexa Bliss. She did a feud of Randy Orton. I thought this was cool. You know, go, having Randy Orton go to Alexa's playground and doing the whole fireball stuff. So I thought that was interesting. It's kind of teasing Bray Wyatt's return. Then you had a continuation of the feud between Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks against Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler. I didn't care for this. You would think Bianca Belair would challenge Sasha Banks by now, but that didn't happen. She wants to go after women's tag belts. I don't get it. She has a guaranteed match at WrestleMania. The women's title, and you want the women's tag team championships. I don't get it. So then you got a few between Big E and Apollo Crews. Big E's the Intercontinental Champion, and for weeks, Apollo Crews has been answering Big E's open challenges. And apparently Biggie told Apollo, no more. That's enough. Go to the back. And Apollo took offense to that. So he tacked back, so he tacked the Biggie with the still steps and he turned heel. I thought this was good. Then he had Drew McIntyre, Sheamus. They were doing a feud with one another. Edge came out. And out of nowhere, he had Sheamus attack Drew McIntyre. And I didn't care for this either because it didn't make any sense. These guys wrestled a series of matches going into fast lane. You know, Sheamus, he won a gauntlet match. Drew won the chamber match. And I believe Drew won a street fight. That should have ended the feud. But then they had a couple more matches that ended no contests. So that didn't make any sense either. So I didn't really care much for this. And Drew's second WWE Championship reign, 
it, it, it wasn't as good as the first one. So this is essentially an number one contenders match for WrestleMania. At least I thought it was. I thought Sheamus would win, and then the match of WrestleMania between Drew and Lashley would be a triple threat. I thought it would be Drew, Sheamus, and Lashley. So you had Daniel Bryan come to SmackDown. He wants to challenge Roman Reigns for one more match at Fastlane. I didn't mind it. thought the feud was all right. They did a feud for Fastlane seven years ago. I enjoyed that match. It's one of my favorite matches of all time, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan. And you get a backstage segment of Edge. So Caleb Braxton asks Edge, who do you want to challenge at WrestleMania? And Edge still doesn't know. So for another month, he is stalling. He is saying that he wants to wait till after Fastlane to make his decision. And I do not care for this at all. You have four months to build a story between Edge and whichever champion he wants to go up against. And for two of these months, he wants to stall. I don't get it. So fast lane, he had Riddle to beat Mustafa Ali. Once again, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax retained the tag team titles. I thought that was shocking. Big E defeats Apollo Crews. He had Braun Strowman defeat Elias. He had Seth Rollins, he defeated Shinsuke Nakamura. He had Alexa Bliss shockingly defeat. Randy Orton with the help of the fiend. He comes back, he's selling his burns. He's colored purple ooze. Drew McIntyre beat Sheamus. And I knew this was going to happen because they already announced the WrestleMania match between Drew and Lashley. Then you had Roman Reigns beat Daniel Bryan. Then you had Edge come out and attack both Ryan and Roman Reigns with the steel chair. And so I guess his decision was finally made. Reigns and Edge. So this leads into the road to WrestleMania. And I thought the road to WrestleMania... It was not good. It Seth Rollins do feud with Zara. That was all right. He had Braun Strowman do a feud with Shane. Man, I thought that was all right. And the best feud going on to WrestleMania. We had Shane McMahon coming out, making fun of Braun Strowman, saying that Braun is stupid and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? Shane's right. Braun, he's, he is an idiot. The majority of the matches that he loses, he looks like an idiot in. So I didn't mind this. But then he had Bray Wyatt challenge Randy Orton to a match at WrestleMania. There wasn't really much of a story to this match. They were just going off of what they did at TLC and WrestleMania 33 four years ago. They had Miz do Miz TV with Bad Bunny. This would lead to a feud between them. In bed with Bad Bunny and Damon Priest. I wasn't all too interested in this because they wasted a lot of time with this story. They started some stuff at the Rumble that it took like two months off and now they picked it back up. You know, I, I didn't care much for it. New Day they did a feud with almost an AJ. I they didn't really care too much for that. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, they defeated going into WrestleMania. I thought this was all right. Then you had Biggie do a feud with Apollo Crews going into WrestleMania. 
I didn't really care much for this. It didn't make any sense. Apollo lost the fast lane. Why is he getting, uh, getting another shot? Then you had Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair. They did their somewhat feud going into WrestleMania. I didn't really care for this. There was no feud, no story. Just a couple of cringe promos. You know, we had Bianca Belair, all goody two shoes, flapping her hair, crying about not winning the women's tag belts. So I didn't really care for this. Then you had Ray Ripley challenge Asuka for WrestleMania. Not much of a story here. Or whatever. Then you had the Roman Reigns situation. It was Roman Reigns and Edge. But then you had Daniel Bryan get involved. And he has a bone to pick with Edge. So Adam Pierce made the WrestleMania match a three-way between Roman Reigns, Edge, and Daniel Bryan. And I could not get behind this. There's a lot of story to tell here. They squandered, they squandered two months of this. And Bryan being in the triple threat match did not make sense. You know, he lost at the Elimination Chamber to Roman Reigns. He didn't win the Rumble. And he lost at Fastlane. So why is he in this match? It's like WrestleMania 30 all over again. Then you had Bobby Lashley. He beat the Miz. He became the new WWE champion. This led to a feud between him and Drew McIntyre. You know, he put a bounty for Drew McIntyre's head. And I thought this stuff was all right. But again, they wasted a lot, a lot of time here on this road to WrestleMania. The stories, the feuds, they never had time to gel. They never had time to come together. They were never really fleshed out. Especially when it came to Bianca Belair and Edge. They squandered three months of stories that they could have told. My WrestleMania card, I would have done Randy Orton, Edge, Reigns, and Goldberg. That's what I would have done. That's the safest route. But apparently they didn't go that route. Yes, because since they're having fans back at WrestleMania, the fans were going to react to everything. So we go to WrestleMania, another two-night event. And Vince opened up the show. Of course, we get to the pop. We get the WWE Championship match. And I was kind of stunned by this. He had Lashley retained his title over Drew McIntyre. I thought this was kind of shocking. Then he had tag team turmoil. It was won by Natalia and Tamina. They became the number one contenders for women's tag team championships. He had Cesaro defeat Seth Rollins. I thought that was good. AJ Styles and Omos defeat the New Day. I didn't care for the feud, but I do think Omos and AJ do make a good team. And, you know, I don't mind AJ Styles being in this position as long as he's trying to get Omos over. Be the next future star. I don't mind it. Braun Strowman defeated Shane McMahon. Bad Bunny and Damon Priest, they defeated the Miz and Morrison. The feud I didn't care about, but the match surprised me. Bad Bunny was pretty good in this match. They had the main event, Bianca Belair. We had Sasha Banks. The match was all right, but I, I couldn't really care. No story going into this match. No reason to care. You know, the outcome was kind of predictable as well. But you got the follow-up. Maybe they can redeem me here. So you get night two. You get Hulk Hogan. He opened up the show. Then you get Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. Oh, I thought Bray was going to win. But no, they had Randy Orton win. This was shocking. So twice Bray Wyatt has lost to Randy Orton. And still, this guy cannot win a traditional one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. I mean, he did beat John Cena at WrestleMania 36, if you want to count that match. Uh, but technically, the match never happened because there was no officially licensed referee. 
He had Kevin Owens beat Sami Zayn. He had Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax defeating Natalya and Tamina. He had Sheamus defeat Matt Riddle for the United States Championship. Respect to Sheamus, a fellow Breakfast Club member. He had Apollo Crews defeat Big E. I wasn't really too keen on this. And they had Commander Z's become Apollo's new um, become his commander. We all know this Daba Kato. They had Ray Ripley defeat Oscar. I was fine with that outcome. Then Rowan Reigns beat both Daniel Bryan and Edge at the same time. So he is still your universal champion. So my thoughts on WrestleMania. I probably give an eight out of ten. I thought it was good, better than last year's, but the build man was just terrible. Every year to build towards WrestleMania, it's just awful. So then we get to build towards backlash. I thought this was all right. So it's some kind of triple threat. This would determine number one contender for Lashley's WWE Championship. Drew McIntyre won. So Braun and MVP, they were meeting in the back. And MVP is like, hey, I don't like Drew McIntyre. You don't like Drew McIntyre. I heard you have a match tonight with Drew. Let me help you out. And if you can beat Drew, then our match at Backlash becomes a three-way. So in the main event, Braun beats Drew McIntyre, and this led to a triple threat. And I like the interaction that Braun, Drew, and Lashley had. I thought this was all right. You had Charlotte Flair coming out. She made her return. She missed WrestleMania. She had a match of Asuka. I believe Asuka won. Then she attacked the referee. She got suspended by Sonya Deville. And then Sonya Deville brought her back. This, this led to a three-way championship match between Asuka Ray Ripley and Charlotte Flair. I wasn't really much of a fan of this. It didn't really make any sense. I mean, I didn't mind her attacking the referee. So I thought that was cool. But then suspending her and unsuspending her, just a little bit too weird. Then you had Sheamus. He won the U.S. title. And he was doing open challenges. Non-title open challenges. Kind of mocking which Cena did the U.S. Open Challenge, and I didn't mind that. There's just one thing that I hate. It's when champions just do open challenges instead of letting the company build contenders for it. So I didn't mind what Sheamus was doing. So you had Miz, Damian Priest, they got into a feud for Backlash. thought this was all right. Without Bad Bunny being there, I was concerned. Then you had Bailey, Bianca Belair. They did a feud going in the backlash. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind their work in the past. I thought this was all right. And on SmackDown, you got a rematch between Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan. This is those title versus career. So Roman Reigns won. And Brian had to leave WWE. And I was like, why wasn't this the match at WrestleMania? Why couldn't you have done Roman Reigns versus Dana Bryan? That would have made better sense. I mean, you could have had Edge challenge Drew McIntyre, Miz, or Lashley. That would have made better sense. I think JD from NY was right. Anyway, then you had Cesaro step up to the plate. He did the feud of Roman Reigns going in the backlash. So he was getting his moment. I thought this was all right. And then you had backlash. The name was odd because they were calling it WrestleMania Backlash. And I'm like, why didn't they make WrestleMania a three night event? This is technically WrestleMania 37, night three.
Can Sheamus beat Ricochet? Ray Ripley defeated Oscar and Charlotte Flair. And Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, they defeated Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. They became the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Yet Damon Priest beat The Miz in a zombie lumberjack match. Very odd. Bianca Blair, she beat Bailey. And yet Lashley defeat Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. And in the main event, yet Roman Reigns beat Cesaro. So throw the back, Lash was all right. Not great, but tolerable. So then we get the build towards Hell in the Cell. And this was awful. McIntyre defeated, continued to dispute with Lashley. It was all right, but they said more of the same stuff they said at WrestleMania. Whatever. Then you had Ray Ripley, Shard of Flair, dated a feud. I wasn't really that interested in this. I didn't really care much for it. So then you had RK Bro. They uh, started the forum. You had Matt Riddle beat Randy Orton on Raw. And Randy Orton started to gain Matt Riddle's respect. Or, or Riddle gained Orton's respect. And they became a tag team, the RK Bro. So I didn't mind this. So then you had Bailey, Bianca. They continued their feel to tell this their feud towards Hell to Cell. I didn't really care much about this. You know, they were on talk shows, giggling and laughing with each other. This was just cringe, cringe promos left and right here. I was really starting to sour on Bianca. Rollins and Zara, they continued their feud from WrestleMania. Same thing with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Then he had Alexa Bliss feud of Shayna Baszler. This was just weird. Alexa, because he had Shayna Baszler, she attacked Lily the doll. He had Alexa Bliss just haunt Shayna Baszler throughout the arena. He had all these paranormal events happening. Just very odd. And I thought that Lily the doll would come alive, attack Shayna Baszler. So this was cool, but it didn't make any sense. Because at WrestleMania, Alexa Bliss screwed Bray Wyatt. And you would think she would go after Bray Wyatt here. But no, she goes after Shayna Baszler. So then we got the Roman Reigns side of the story. I didn't really care much for this. Jimmy Uso returned. I did not know what they were doing here. I thought they were setting up Jimmy Uso versus Roman Reigns. But then they started teasing, then they started teasing Jimmy Uso versus Jay Uso. I didn't really care for that. And then they started to do a feud between Rey Mysterio and Roman Reigns right out of nowhere. I didn't really care much for this. The match didn't even happen, Hell in a Cell. It happened on SmackDown. So Roman Reigns didn't defend the belt at Hell in a Cell. We get the hell in the cell. You had Natalia defeat Mandy Rose. Bianca Belair defeated Bailey. Seth Rollins beat Cesaro. Alexa Bliss defeated Shayna Baszler. Sami Zayn defeated Kevin Owens. Charlotte Flair defeated Ray Ripley by disqualification. If Bobby Lashley defeated Drew McIntyre, now that's for Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell, the bill is just most of the stuff I could not care for. It's just rematches from WrestleMania. They didn't care much for it. Shayna Baszler buried against Cesaro, loses Seth Rollins. So what was the point of their match at WrestleMania? Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, they went 50-50. And they're dragging this whole Shard of Flair stuff, which I, I wasn't really all that invested in. 
So then we got some breaking news. Coming right out of WrestleMania. The cut list. A lot of W superstars getting fired. Ron Strowman was fired. Bray Wyatt was fired. Icky James fired. Alistair Black was fired. Alexander Wolf, Bobby Fish, Brizongo, Lana, Ruby Riot, Mercedes Martinez, Bronson Reed, Delphine Dream, and Killing Dane. All names were fired or quit. This was shocking. I did not quite expect this. Especially Braun and Bray. Like, I don't think those two guys would be fired, but apparently there's some restructuring going on in the company. We got some more breaking news. Fans are coming back to live attendance. They're doing like a 25 city tour as the arenas begin to reopen. So we feed, so we go to the money in the bank. You had Nikki Cross debut this new character, like she's some kind of superhero. I didn't really mind it at first. I think she's experimenting with something. Charlotte Flair continued her feud with Ray Ripley, didn't care. You had Mustafa Ali and, and Mansoor. They started to do these backstage feuds. But that was somewhat interesting. It led to a match between the two, which stuff Ali won, so that was all right. And then you had a feud between Bobby Lashley and Kofi Kingston. And I thought this feud is uh, very interesting. He said, Lashley, he beat Xavier Woods' side of Helm's Cell. That's what kept Kofi Kingston to step up. I thought this was all right. You also saw some tension between MVP and Lashley as well. Then you had Edge and Reigns. They had another feud towards Money in the Bank. So the build towards Money in the Bank goes, I couldn't really care much for it. Snakey Cross stuff, I was somewhat interested in, but I didn't really know where it was going to go. Charlotte Ray Ripley just wasn't for me. So we go to SmackDown. He turns in front of the live audience. So you had Vince open up the show, of course. We had Roman Reigns and the Usos. They defeated Dominic Mysterio, Ray Mysterio, and Edge. And then you had like a mock lay in the bank ladder match. It's a fatal four way. Seth Rollins won. You had Bianca Belair defeat Bianca Belair defeated Carmella. You had Finn Balor make his return and he took out Sami Zayn. So as far as SmackDown's return to a live audience, show was all right. You know, but how long would this last? Go to the Money in the Bank. The Usos, they defeated the Mysterios. They're new tag team champions. Nikki Cross wins the Money in the Bank briefcase. Age thousand almost, they defeated the Viking Raiders. Bobby Lashley, he defeated Kofi Kingston. And Charlotte Flair defeated Ray Ripley. And she's the new women's champion. Biggie wins the Money in the Bank briefcase. Roman Reigns defeats Edge. And out of nowhere, John Cena. Yes, he hasn't been seen over a year. Makes his return to confront Roman Reigns. We begin to build towards SummerSlam. And the build towards SummerSlam, it, it sucked. It, it did. I'm sorry. So he had Cena come out and he challenged Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns refused to answer John Cena. So out came Finn Balor. And they were going to do a contract sign. So I don't know where Baron Corbin comes out, attacks Finn Balor. Balor fails to sign the contract. So Cena comes out, 
signs the contract instead. So it's Cena versus Reigns. And as far as the promos between the two, they, they were all right. But it was more the same from their promos at No Mercy. Their feud at No Mercy was better. Their feud here was all right, but just, they were just missing something. Seth Rollins' edge, that feud was all right. You know, they start off some backstage feuds, which were pretty interesting. He had Goldberg make his return. He challenged Bobby Lashley. And I didn't mind it. You know, if Lesnar wasn't there to challenge Bobby Lashley, I think Goldberg is a suitable replacement. A nice challenge. It's like the feud that they had. The Nikki Cross. Come out. She attacked Charlotte Flair, and then she cashed in on her to become the new Raw Women's Champion. I didn't mind this, but then the follow-up was just terrible. Well, you had Nikki go 50-50. She'd lose matches to Charlotte Flair, then she'd beat Ray Ripley. And then you had like a three-way match at SummerSlam between these three women. I didn't really care much for this. Some of the promos were all right, but, you know, they did a triple threat match at the house show that I went to. Nikki Cross won. So I don't know why they did this rematch at SummerSlam. That didn't make any sense. If Eva Marie made a return to the company, she was managing Piper Niven. They were doing some kind of feud between Lexa Bliss. It wasn't really all that interesting. In it. The, the, the team that Eva Marie and Piper Niven had, there was no direction behind it. They were 50-50. They lose matches, win matches, no direction at all. Although some of the backstage segments they had with Lex Bliss were all right. But I wasn't really invested in this. Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, stated a few towards SummerSlam. Didn't care. Bianca's had an awful title reign. The follow-up did not screw well. She did feuds with Bayley at every pay-per-view. She wrestled Carmella on every episode of SmackDown. So I couldn't care. Yet Drew McIntyre do a feud of General Mahal. Apparently, General Mahal stole Drew's sword, but Drew destroyed Jenner's motorcycle. This was awful. They could have gone more into the story between these two about how they were in the three man band, but they didn't do that either. So go to SummerSlam and Biggie to beat Baron Corbin. At RK Bro, they defeated AJ Styles and Omos, attacking the titles. Damon Priest, Damon Priest defeated Sheamus for the US title. And Alexa Bliss defeated Ava Marie. This would lead to Piper Niven turning on Ava Marie. And they kind of uh, would split on their own here. And the Usos, they defeated the Mysterios. Drew McIntyre defeated Jenner Mahal. And we were going to get Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks. Due to some reason, Sasha Banks was pulled out. Which, again, I, that, that gave me another reason why I didn't care about the feud. Sasha Banks fails to show up. What was the point of them? What was the point of Sasha Banks' return? I would have had a return after SummerSlam. But out of nowhere came Becky Lynch. She challenged Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair accepted. And Becky squashed her in 20 seconds. What an awful reign to end Bianca Belair's title. But I don't blame Becky here. I blame Bianca. You know, why would she accept to lose a 30-second match when she's the champion? Some people were mad at Becky saying Becky should have stood up the fence in the back. Well, no. Becky has everything in the game. I don't mind her winning the championship. Bianca's reign was awful. Why not give it to Becky? I just wish Bianca was not so cringe. Then you had Charlotte Flair defeat Ray Ripley and Nikki Cross. I couldn't care about this. Don't even know why to give the title to Nikki Cross. 
Thing and Edge beats Seth Rollins. Lashley beats beats Bill Goldberg by referee stoppage. Thought the match was pretty good until the ending there. Roman Reigns beat John Cena. This match was awesome. Better than the one at No Mercy. Wish the feud was better. But the reason why I like this match better because their match at No Mercy, it needed to take place on a bigger stage with something on the line. We finally got it here. And then at the end of the show, Brock Lesnar would make a shocking return. You know, as beard, his beard grown out, his hair grown out. He looks like a mountain man, and he confronts Roman Reigns. Well, I thought this was interesting. So we get to build towards extreme rules. I didn't really care much for this. He had, a feud, he had the feud between Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. I didn't care for this. Both women just cringe on the microphone for some reason. Charlotte Flair and Alexa Bliss, they did the feud. I didn't mind that. That Piper Nevin defeat Ava Marie. So Piper Nevin is on her own officially. He had Orton defeat of Bobby Lashley, and I thought this would lead to a match at Extreme Rules. Instead, the match happened on Monday Night Raw. Lashley defeated Orton. Then Biggie out of nowhere cashed in on Bobby Lashley. He became the new WWE champion. I was kind of surprised by this. I thought they would hold off till Mania, but apparently they did early because Monday Night Football's back. They had Seth Rollins defeat Edge. SmackDown and Madison Square Garden. And then you had Finn Balor. He did a feud with Roman Reigns. This led to SmackDown's Madison Square Garden. Roman Reigns defeated Finn Balor. Then Finn Balor brought back the demon to challenge Roman Reigns for extreme rules. They didn't care for this. I'm not a really a Finn Balor guy. Get extreme rules. Yet Liv Morgan defeated Carmel. The New Day, they defeated Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omos. And the Usos defeat the Street Profits. Yet Charlotte Flair defeat Alexa Bliss. Yet Damon Priest defeat Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. Yet Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair to end no contest. Yet Sasha Banks return. Screw up the whole thing. The Roman Reigns defeated Ben Balor by a ring collapse. It's just a complete cringe. Then we get the build towards Crown Jewel. Couldn't care. Yet Seth and Edge, they continued their feel. It's their feud. It's Seth and if Seth break into Edge's house. I thought this was cool. Goldberg came back for revenge against Bobby Lashley. I didn't mind this. They involved the Goldberg son, Gage, and that kind of made his feud a little more personal. So that was good. Then you had Drew McIntyre, Big E, dated the, the, the WWE Championship. I didn't mind this. This was also all right. You know, Drew lost to Lashley, so he had no more opportunities at the title as long as Lashley was champion. But he's no longer the champion now. So Drew has the right to challenge Big E. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, the feud going in the crown jewel. This was all right, but they could have done a lot more with the story here between these two. They had like six years of history, and they barely referenced their match at WrestleMania. So this whole tribal chief thing of Roman Reigns, I'm not that into. Then you had a triple threat match for crown jewel. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Sasha Banks didn't care for this. Then they announced the King of the Ring. Couldn't care for King of the Ring. I thought they got the finals right. It was Xavier Woods and Finn Balor, so that was all right. And he had the Queen's Crown turn, the Women's King of the Ring tournament. I could not care for this. I hate King of the Ring. I don't know why I bring it back every year. It's not important. The person that wins doesn't do anything with the King of the Ring uh, gimmick, anyways. It's just a gimmick. 
That's what it is. He had Crown Jewel. He had the Usos defeat the Hurt Business. He had Mansoori beat Mustafa Ali. He had Zelina defeat Piper Niven. Become the new queen of the ring. He had Xavier Woods defeat Finn Balor. RK Bro, they retain their tag team titles over AJ Styles and Omos. Becky Lynch wins the triple threat match. He had Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair. The E defeats Drew McIntyre. Lashley, no, Goldberg defeats Lashley this time. And Edge defeats Seth Rollins inside of Hell in the Cell. And Roman Reigns beats Brock Lesnar. So then we go to the build towards Survivor Series. And I thought the build towards Survivor Series was actually pretty good. They had Rhea Ripley and Nikki Cross. They, they lost the tag belts to Carmel and Selena Vega. I didn't really care much for this. You had Liv Morgan. She became the number one contender. She won like a fatal five way. And she challenged Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. They were setting that match up, which I didn't mind. I feel like Liv needs a chance in the WWE. I like Liv, but haven't really done anything with her. Seth won a ladder match, became the new number one contender, feud with Biggie over the WWE Championship. I thought the feud was pretty good. Then you had Kevin Owens get into the mix, and they were kind of teasing a triple threat. Usos in a new day, they were doing a feud. This is because they're setting up Roman Reigns and Big E in the clash at Survivor Series. So they throw in Big E here and they stare down Roman. Thought this was all right. Then they had Brock Lesnar. He's furious about losing the Roman Reigns. So he attacks Adam Pierce and gets suspended. Very similar to what happened with Stephen McMahon and Brock Lesnar back in 2015. I thought this was all right. With that, got some more breaking news, more WWE releases. They keep on coming. Hit Row, they were fired. They were called up in the summertime. They had like, they were featured for like two weeks on SmackDown, and then they were gone. Nia Jax was fired. Tiggy Knox was fired. John Morrison was fired. His wife, Taya Valkyrie, also fired. Mia Yim fired. Even Marie, I feel bad for her. She was fired. Karen Cross had a match on the main roster. He lost to Jeff Hardy in his first match. He was the NXT champion, too. That was terrible. We'll talk some more about NXT later. I might do a timeline video on that. Talk about the growth of NXT and then maybe the downfall of it. Keith Lee fired as well. Order up. <laughs> More talents to AEW, I guess. To get the Survivor Series. Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Damian Priest by disqualification. It Becky Lynch defeats Charlotte Flair. I was surprised by this. Almost he won a, some kind of battle royal. And RK Road defeat the Usos. Then you had Team Raw. You had Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Carmella. And Queen Zelina, they defeated Team SmackDown. Sasha Banks, Shayna Baszler, Shotzi Natalya, and Tony Storm. So Bianca Belair stands tall. It's Seth Rollins. He won the Survivor Series match for his team. He had Roman Reigns beat Big E. 
So I thought Survivor Series was pretty good, except for one thing. They're billing the show as The Rock's 25th anniversary, and The Rock did not show up. And I'm like, why didn't you lock down The Rock for Survivor Series? This was in the Barclays Center. He debuted a block down from the Barclays Center at Square Garden 25 years ago. Why not bring Dwayne Johnson? Instead, they made some type of storyline about Vince McMahon stole an egg. Then we get to the end of the year, December. So as far as the record keeping goes, the record is five and six. Five months I've enjoyed from 2021. Six months I have not. In December it kind of came down to the why. There's some stuff I did like, but some stuff I didn't. The stuff I didn't was just completely overwhelming. You had a, they originally announced a triple threat match for a new pay-per-view called Day One. Biggie, Rollins, and Owens. But then you had Lashley beat all three men in a gauntlet match. So now the match is the Fatal 4 win. You had a Raw Women's title match between Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. Becky Lynch won. I was fine with that. But then you had Liv Morgan challenge Becky to a rematch. And this feud, I could not care for. Queen Zelina, Carmella, they continued their somewhat feud with Nikki Cross and Rhea Ripley. I didn't really care for this. There was no feud. It's just a bunch of series of matches for women's tag belts. Didn't care. Rock Lesnar, he came back. He did a short program with Sami Zayn, and that was fun. And then he was teasing a program for Roman Reigns at day one. I thought that was good. Bianca Belair, do drop. Piper Newman's new name. They did the feud. I thought the feud was all right, but then they dropped the ball on it. They had like Bianca Blair beat Drew to do drop in three straight matches. Like, I feel bad for Piper Niven here, man. Failed to win King and Queen of the Ring. Now she can't beat Bianca Belair. I don't mind her being a heel, though, but. Then you had Edge defeated the Miz. And I didn't mind this. You have two Hollywood couples going at it. You know, Edge, Beth Phoenix. Ms. Maurice, two Hollywood personalities, former world champions. I didn't mind this. Charlotte Flair defeated Tony Storm. And she beat Tony Storm in SmackDown. But that was all right. But then Tony Storm walked out and quit for some reason. And this is the rest of the stuff that made me hate December here and the end of the year. And this is why. The end of the year sucks. And Damien Priest, he started doing this multiple personality gimmick. You know, he would freak out and get himself disqualified. So he would lose on purpose like an idiot. This guy's done nothing with the U.S. title. He's had no feuds. He's had no storylines. There's a bunch of matches with like Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler that would end in DQs. The only match I liked was the triple threat match that he had with Seamus and McIntyre. That was about it. <laughs> Same thing with Shinsuke. You know, they, they paired him up with Rick Boogs. They've done nothing as a pairing. Shinsuke has no, had no feuds. He's had no storylines. He's done nothing with the Intercontinental title. And I don't know why they gave him the belt back. They should have kept the belt on Big E. Yeah, you had Shinsuke take the belt off Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews' title reign was not good either. The mid card sucks. Not just in WWE, but also in other companies as well. At RK Bro, they had a series of title match against title matches against the Alpha Academy. I didn't really care for this. So I, I didn't even care for that. Almost an AJ, they broke up. Almost defeated AJ. I didn't mind the match. I don't know where they're going to go almost. He needs a lot of work. He needs to start 
uh, going up against credible talent that I can take seriously, and he needs to develop some type of personality. So as far as 2021 goes, it sucks. So the record is five and seven. So I'm going to give the year a five out of 10. I mean, this year came close to being somewhat of a decent year. I'll say that. This is better than 2019. This is better than 2020. But the road to WrestleMania, they dropped the ball on it. Road to SummerSlam, they also dropped the ball on it. And that's why this year gets a 5 out of 10 this year. It, 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 it did suck. I'm sad. Because there were some good moments in this year. But just, just the WWE, man, they continue to lose their way every year. But I guess I'll see you back next year with 2022. And in the meantime, I might do a timeline video on NXT and do some breakdowns and stuff like that. So I guess I'll uh, see you all next year for your 2022 year in review. This year is 2021 year in review. So see you later.